Welcome to the Caravanly series where I will be taking you on a unique hop-on, hop-off experience all throughout the country of Georgia. There are tons of fascinating and authentic stops all through this country and thanks to Caravanly, I got to experience that firsthand. I have here my trusty Caucasus map and I will be guiding you through one of the most exciting trips of my life. So even though the trip started here in Georgia's capital, Tbilisi, I was picked up a few days later here in Batumi, where I spent two months over the summer. So that's where the trip actually started for me, on the Black Sea coast, Batumi. What is up gringos? Today is day one of my caravanly trip. I'm so excited. This is my first sponsored trip. So it's a big deal for me. So right now I'm leaving my apartment here in Batumi and I am headed to the Batumi theater where I'm gonna get on the van and hit the road. So I'm just standing here in front of the Batumi theater. That's the Batumi fountain just there. Uh, waiting for the pickup from Caravanly and can't wait to meet the gang. And what a gang it was. Honestly, in the beginning, I was a little intimidated to be among such seasoned travel writers and photographers. We will be meeting them all along the journey. So for our first stop, we actually made our way through the subtropical tea route of the Guria province. And we ended up very close to a little town called Ozurgeti, where we were very well received by generations of Georgian women, led by Lika. The house which she will, she's going to show us, uh, uh, most color. of uh, the parts are uh, more oh, as as it's 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 as about 650 years old. We built uh, by her father's grandmother's grandfather. Ah. Lika proceeded to show us her quirky glamping spot called the Diogenes Barrel, complete with a pull-out table for some homemade wine, electricity, Wi-Fi, and a view of the Gomi mountain range. It definitely contends as one of the most peaceful Airbnb spots on the planet. We were then given a tour of the family's tea plantation that originated during the Soviet era and Lika explained more about how tea showed up in the Ajara region. As always, the charming Annie was on hand to translate everything for us. Uh, Russia was very interested to make tea fields, but uh, the climate was not uh, proper for this uh, kind of... Uh, so for tea, because it needs uh, hot and humid weather. And subtropical. Subtropical uh, climate. He had the choice, but he sold all of the ice cream. So now he has only one type, vanilla ice cream. We made our way through the family's bamboo plantation and arrived at a peaceful creek where some of Lika's workaway volunteers had made a little boat. Pirates. Okay. Tea pirate. Tea pirate. <laughs> After watching Annie try her luck, it was time for me to take it for a spin. Only one? Who wants? Yeah, anyone. Anyone? anyone brave enough? Three, two, two one. Go, go, go. It's the last call. Go. Go. Uh, had a great explanation of, on the history of tea and how it's made and now we're gonna have some lunch because I am starving. Try some tea right after so. Day one, going well so far. Mm. 
<laughs> Still some space. Who's this man? It's my grand grandfather. Oh. You can take it. Oh. <laughs> it's postcards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is in the tea bushes so in the same place. So as you just saw, Lika gifted us with these amazing postcards of her family history. We literally sat at the same table for lunch. And it felt really special to be dining in the same space where many of her family's generations had dined before. And then we were able to try on some traditional Georgian outfits that even had little pouches for bullets on them. And so, it was finally time for the grand finale. First, Lika explained to us the ins and outs of how their tea is fabricated. And finally, it was time for the taste test. And with the tea came a feeling of tranquilness and serenity. And I suppose that's what the Kamli experience is all about. About 30 kilometers away from where we were here in Ozurgeti lies a mountain called the Gomi Mountain, just about here. And at 2,000 meters high, it's quite the bumpy ride up but you are rewarded with 360 degrees of mystic, foggy views. Let's check it out. Hey, little unicorn. How do you like it? Um, I like it. Is it pretty? Yes. How was the ride up here? Um, uh, nice. Nice. I think we're like 2,000 meters up in the air. Uh, we were promised a sea of clouds and indeed what we see is a sea of clouds unfortunately not much more than that apparently you can see the black sea from here too uh, but the foggy weather does feel nice after a very hot day um, checking out the tea plantation and such so let's see if we're lucky enough for it to open up the chances of seeing the sunset were washed away with a wave of clouds so i decided to get to know my trip mate baya a little better Hi everyone, I'm Baya from uh, a blog Red Fedora Diary. Yeah, Red Fedora here. Um, I'm a travel writer and blogger. I write mostly for international publications about Georgia because I'm Georgian and I know my country pretty well. There are some places I haven't been to, like this, for example, but unfortunately we have a foggy day. I was expecting more. <laughs> I was ex actually expecting the sea of cloud. Yeah. And look, it seems that behind you the, the sun is coming out. Really? So. Oh, nice. I'm sure that normally it really is an amazing view because you have a lot of people camping up here, as you can see, even at 2,000 meters up. So yeah, you can see all the construction that's going on here. And just imagine how amazing it would be to spend a weekend in that little house. It's starting to look like something that could resemble a sea of clouds, am I right? And we're gonna make it to the other side of the mountain where it has opened up a bit and we have a view like this. Well, the plan was to see the sunset here. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but after this, we're gonna go down the mountain again. It'll probably take about an hour or so. And day two will be in Kutaisi. I have a free day in Kutaisi tomorrow, so I'm gonna investigate, see what I can show you around there. And as we made our way down Gomi Mountain and headed to our next stop, Kutaisi, I pondered about what day two might be like with waterfalls, canyons, and the eerie Soviet spa town of Tskaltubo. So we've only covered a small portion of the country today and there's still loads to see all around Georgia. So continue joining me on this caravanly trip by clicking on the video that's on your screen and I will see you in day two. Three, two, one.